Now, this is going to be quite a long video. So if you're already familiar with the Osmo and all its functionality, you may want to skip to specific parts that you want. We always try and cater for viewers who are at any stage of the Osmo journey. So feel free to skip to sections that are highlighted on this slide. So here it is, the Zenmuse M1, the mobile gimbal for Osmo. So let's check out what's inside. So you've got the usual silica gel. This is what it's all about. Let's just take a moment to go through the anatomy of this little baby. So you've got the mobile phone holder at the back. You've got the adjustable arm. As you twist it, you can see the mobile phone holder expands or contracts to grip whatever phone you've placed in here. At the base here, you've got the pan motor over here, that's the tilt motor. And over here is obviously the pitch motor. On the side here, you've got the balance adjustment knob. So obviously if you undo that, you can then slide out or inwards depending on the size of your mobile phone. This right here is a mobile phone detection sensor. It's gotta be blocked for this gimbal to be operational. And I think that's pretty much everything. Oh yeah, of course, you do get a nice little gimbal cap to protect those connectors. So the first thing we want to do is mount the Osmo and I've opted to use the Goose Pod, which if you want to get details on how to get the Goose Pod, check out all the details right here. Anyway, so the first thing you want to do, we want to remove the Zenmuse X3. So all you do is you unlock, lift that up. Then we bring in the Zenmuse M1 itself. Simply remove the cap. Then all we got to do is basically align it to the handle with the white line, just like that, and then you lock. So the next thing we want to do, obviously we want to slide in the mobile phone itself. So twist this adjustment arm until it kind of looks like it will fit whatever phone you're sliding in. In my case, I'm using the iPhone 7 Plus. So slide it all the way till the end, and then just simply lock this adjustment arm right here. Next thing we want to do is basically just balance this. So balancing the phone on the gimbal is really easy. All you do is you adjust the balance adjustment knob, which is located at the back right here. And in the case of the iPhone 7 Plus, because it's quite a long phone, simply slide it all the way to the end and then you lock. And that's as easy as it gets to balance the gimbal. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that the Bluetooth is enabled. Next thing is to power up the camera. Next we go to the DJI Go app. And it's automatically detected that we connected to the Osmo Mobile. So it prompts us to connect via Bluetooth. So all we've got to do is just click connect. Obviously click OK accept the request to pair and then you click the next button you do the usual login once you've logged into your account simply click activate so now the osmo mobile is successfully activated so now we can go over to the camera feel free to take the tutorial should you wish to or in my case, I'll take a look at that next time. And the camera is now ready for use. Now we're gonna take a very quick walk through the DJI Go app and see what sort of features are available when you're using the Zenmuse M1. On the right hand side here, so we've got the home button obviously. Below that, you've got the camera icon. So first thing you see in the camera icon, beautify effect, as the name implies, these you can switch either on or off. If you've got them on, you've got the ability to choose normal, brighten, darken. Now let's take a look at the manual adjust. If you switch that on, that means you've now got the ability to manually change the ISO 
and the way you do that is you a slider pops up and then you can slide through to select whatever ISO setting you want. I'm going to slide all the way back and it goes back to auto. Same thing with the shutter speed. You can slide all the way to 1 1,000th. 1, Again, I'm simply going to leave that on auto. And then white balance. Again, you've got the ability to select the color temperature. So I'm simply going to leave all of that in auto. Let's go back to the camera icon. White balance. You've got several modes of white balance. Again, I'm simply going to leave that on auto. You've got the option to display a grid with diagonals, just a grid or a center point. I'm going to go with none for now. Flash mode, you've got the ability to turn the camera's flash, set it on auto. Right now it's currently set on off. The next icon is for gimbal settings. So let's start off first with the scene mode. Scene mode, you've got two options to choose. If you're walking, select this mode. If you're doing fast movement, select sport mode. The only difference is the speed at which the camera is responding to your movements. Pitch lock. So first of all, let's start with pitch lock turned off. So with pitch lock turned off, as you pitch, you find the camera is following your movements. But if we turn the pitch lock off, then the camera stays fixed in one position, regardless of your pitch movement. Now let's move on to the gear icon. Gear icon, you've got several settings, including the camera, video resolution, where you can choose 4K, 1080p, at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or 720p at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to leave it on 4K. Go back. Panorama quality, again, you can choose whether you want high, middle, or low quality. And then the last one, you can obviously reset the camera. In the gimbal settings, you can calibrate the roll, calibrate, or do an auto calibration. Let's do that right now. So then it goes through an auto calibration. I can tell you now from looking at it that it's about 40% done. And that's it. The gimbal is calibrated. You've also got options to change how the joystick behaves, whether you want fast, middle or slow speed as well as the stick control direction, horizontal, vertical, or free. Let's go on to the next one. Under general, you've got the version number, so that gives you your firmware. Then the next one is the live settings. You've got the ability to obviously broadcast live to Facebook, Weibo, YouTube, QZones, I don't even know what that is, or a custom RTMP. Over on this side, we're still in photo mode, You've got, first of all, the ability to shoot in single, pano. If you choose pano, you've got three different panorama options, 180 degree, 330. If we go with that one, for example, select that one, and then you go for pano. It will take several different images, nine in total, and then stitch them all together to create some kind of panorama. This is not going to be pretty by any means, but uh, I'm sure you get the idea. So that stitches that in camera. Not bad, actually. Long exposure. This is if you want to take those really long exposure shots. This next icon here is for selfie mode. And then this last one here, it shows you the files that you've taken. Now let's go into video mode and I'm just going to touch on the differences that you find when you go to video mode. 
So again, you just select that right here. Let's start off with this icon right in the center here. So that circle has got two functions. So first of all, in this mode, if you tap anywhere in the frame, for example, there, that's where the sharpest focus is going to be for your image. But you also get this slider where you can adjust the brightness from way down low to as high as it can go. And then a second tap will convert it into this mode. Now this is the cool feature which activates active tracking. And we say hello to our beautiful model. So this next feature, basically you use this for motion tracking. So as you can see, we've got the box in the frame. And as it's being moved around, guess what? The camera is tracking it. So it's as simple as that. And um, so to get out of the active track mode, simply click exit and it stops tracking. And then to get back to the exposure mode, simply click this again. Then you can again adjust your brightness whichever way you want. Now let's go into the video modes. So in the video modes, we've got the standard slow motion, time lapse. This is no more time lapse. But the exciting thing about the Zenmuse M1 is this motion time lapse. So motion time lapse basically allows you to set predetermined positions for the camera as it goes through the time lapse. For example, if I want to start a time lapse, let's say at this position, all I do is I click this once, so that's my position A. Position B, I want to come down a little bit to there, position B, and then my last position in this example, I'm going to go all the way here. So I've got three camera positions for my time lapse. Then I click next. Then all you have to do is choose the interval, how often do you want a shot to be taken? In my case, I want it every two seconds. And for the purpose of this example, I wanted this to go ahead for one minute. As soon as you hit start, it goes to your first position, gets ready, and the time lapse goes on for a minute. So whilst that's happening, I'm going to go and grab myself a bottle of water. And the time lapse is complete. So if we just go into our folder with all the shots, we can take a quick look at that time lapse. So I know it's not the longest of time lapses, but I think you get the idea. When you're in video mode, some of these icons have additional features to them. For example, if we just click the camera icon, you now have the ability to change the video resolution just from this camera icon without having to go into camera settings. So Again, I'll choose 4K. That just gives you a rundown of the main features when you're using DJI Go app. But this gimbal doesn't only work with the DJI Go app. You can use third party apps such as Filmic Pro. And to do that, simply open Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro will cover it in a separate video. Otherwise, this review is going to be so long. But I just want to show you how you can use Filmic Pro with the Zen 1 Muse mobile gimbal. So first you need to go into settings and then you scroll all the way down to hardware. If you click that once, you will see DJI Osmo Mobile. Select that, turn that on. And this little drop down pops up and that means we should be connected. So now you can use some of these controls just like you would with the DJI Go app but you're using a much more superior video app. Filmic Pro allows you, if you don't already know, to shoot much higher resolution footage in the highest bitrate possible, 100 megabits per second. The built-in iOS camera will not achieve that sort of bitrate. So you may want to play around with this app, but it is a paid app. But you know, if you're gonna be filming with this quite a lot, then I'm sure it'll be worth that investment. And then obviously the default app 
you can still use that the iOS default video app you can definitely use that to shoot so these are all the features that you have with the Zenmuse M1 now we're going to go on to how you can actually mount the Zenmuse M1 okay so this is the connectivity test I just want to see how many of these accessories we can actually use with the Zenmuse M1 connected to our Osmo and a couple of these including the Z-axis a couple of lights a couple of microphones um, this sort of thing so let's start off with the Z-axis and see if we can get that connected so first thing I want to do just remove this obviously then um, we want to connect Okay, so that's nice and secure there. I'm gonna lock that in place. Now this is the bit that I've made this spring as stiff as it will go, because this is a pretty heavy unit. But I just wanna see, you know, can we get away with it? So this just need to be a little bit careful. Just like that and we lock that in place all right so all that's left now is to turn the Osmo on so this is what we get right here all right so notice if you hold this upright like this this is way too heavy for it but what I want to try and do is see if you tilt it at an angle like that you know how this is gonna fare so that looks pretty pretty steady like that so obviously if you hold it like that this spring is just not stiff enough it's, it's not gonna so what you do you tend to tilt it slightly and you get an angle like that so this is one of the tests that we're going to be doing but for now is just to see the connectivity so i think we can get away with something like that. it looks like a low down shot and this next test we want to see if we can use this gimbal extension we want to see if we can operate the zenmuse m1 remotely so what i want to do first of all is i just want to mount this on a mini tripod just like this okay put that firmly like that so on this end I'm going to start with this end this is where the camera goes make sure you lock it so that's connected like that and then on this side obviously you want to connect the handle okay now for the remote test so simply gonna switch that on voila it works you can pan tilt Let's see if you can take a selfie selfie mode won't work so this can work quite well and because it works on here there's no reason why you can't mount it on several other stands that have got, got a quarter inch tripod mount because we're making use of the osmo microphone jack we use the trs to trs cable this one right here and now let's see if we can record a little bit of audio check one two check one two so i can see the audio meters here check one two check one two this is a test uh, and to make sure that this is indeed the microphone that's catching i'm just gonna scratch it okay let's stop that let's see if we can play back
So here's how we conducted the tests that are coming up just now. We and a lot of people who have purchased the Zenmuse M1 have done specifically so for one main reason, to get stabilized footage. So because of this reason, in terms of comparing how well stabilized video footage is, we've opted to use simply the walking test. So we're simply gonna walk around with the Osmo mounted with the Zenmuse M1 and then see how that footage compares when we bring it back into the editing suite. So we're gonna look at footage that was shot handheld now, I know this is all about the Osmo, so why handheld? Well, simply because when you shoot handheld, at least you've got a basis for comparing how much the M1 or whatever contraption we've added to it, how much stabilization it is adding. So this is our basis for comparing all the footage. In addition, we also get a sense of how the in-camera stabilization is affecting the footage that we shoot. So the handheld footage is solely for that purpose. All footage was shot in 4K at 30 frames per second in full auto mode. No color grading was done whatsoever. So enough talking. Uh, let's get ready to rumble!
So the overall winner that we chose is the Zenmuse M1 using the Z-axis, using the Filmic Pro app with image stabilization turned on. So according to what we could see, this gave us the best footage but maybe you saw differently. I mean, this is why we do this sort of test. So, so you may get an idea of where you might want to start off. So let's check out the kind of footage that you can get when you use this particular combination. So we've had a full weekend to play around with the Zenmuse M1, check out all the features and, you know, take it for a test run. So we're now in a position to give you what we liked and what we didn't like about the Zenmuse M1. So first thing, this is now starting to sound like a broken record, but the build quality is absolutely exceptional. I think DJI are known for their, you know, for their build quality and this is no exception it's really really well built it's solid it looks like it can last a lifetime so that's really great to see the second thing we liked is the increased battery life i think the battery life they quote something between three and four hours on the actual handle itself however we did notice that the battery of the phone tends to go down quite fast so you've got to just take those two into cognizance the third thing we liked is you know when you've got the zenmuse m1 you're obviously future proofing yourself versus future versions of smartphones. So with camera technology changing with, with each new iteration of a smartphone, you're able to keep up with the very latest technology in terms of smartphone cameras. The, the, the other thing we liked is the versatility that is offered in terms of the apps available. I mean, we tested three apps, but I'm sure there's several other different apps that you can get, third-party apps, paid or free. You know, they're out there, they're available. The other thing we liked is Bluetooth connectivity. It's faster and also frees up your Wi-Fi to be able to do other stuff that your phone might need for Wi-Fi. So that's really great. I mean, the M1 connects to the Osmo handle. So if you already have an Osmo handle, you know, you're saving as much as 140 pounds in our case, you know, because this costs 179 and the Osmo Mobile costs 319 pounds. So there is definitely a cost saving. So that's a definite plus. The fact that you can detach it from the handle means you can connect the Zenmuse M1 to the Z-axis as you saw us do in the tests, as well as the gimbal remote extension. So that again is a definite plus. Higher bit rates we've already talked about when you use apps like Filmic Pro. So the footage that you get is really high quality footage. But of course the two biggest pluses that have drawn us to the Zenmuse M1, and I'm sure a lot of other people, is obviously the active tracking as well as the motion time lapse. I mean, that in itself could be enough to justify getting the Zenmuse M1. Really cool features. Now let's move on to some negatives. First negative would like to be the lack of easy audio connectivity. 
For us, maybe it's because we're using the iPhone 7 Plus, which doesn't allow you to, there's basically no gap left to be able to connect any um, external mic cable and things like that. I know, you know, other people are getting away with it by displacing the iPhone slightly so that you've got room to plug in a mic jack but then you have to deal with counterweights and you know who knows what that does to the lifespan of your gimbal motors so just for that reason alone we, we think that's a negative the second has to be the need to almost shoot in auto mode i mean you know smartphones mostly or work in auto mode so you've got very little control of sometimes the way the camera chooses to select iso shutter speed and things like that so you can get variations in the exposure of your footage that you get but you know for most purposes this footage really looks great and you know it is definitely usable but it just means you don't have that manual control unless you choose to have it in which case you then need to maybe deal with things like nd filters to be able to bring your shutter speed all the way down which is actually could be negative number three the fact that you would need additional means to attach filters that will further reduce your light coming through to hit the center so that you can operate at lower shutter speeds lower iso and so on the other negative we found has to do with the workflow i think you know because we work a lot with 4k footage sometimes very high bitrate for 4k footage the ability to be able to transfer this as quickly and as efficiently as possible to the computer is of paramount importance you know so when you're filming with these apps all of this is saved on the phone itself and then you have to find a means to transfer it from the phone to the computer and we found this can be a real negative you know if you've got quite a lot of these files huge files of that i mean two minutes was a two minute clip using the filming pro was roughly was roughly two gig in size and we had up to 17 of these files to, to download at any one time so yeah that takes time sd card on the other hand is quick especially if you've got usb3 connectivity that is way faster so that is something to consider but you know like for everyday use shouldn't really be an, a, an issue but we just had to put it there as one of the negatives the other negative is there's no flat picture profile such as D-Log that you find with the Zenmuse X3 which will mean you know the dynamic range of your picture is not as great so when it comes to color grading if you want to use it for color grading purposes you may find you know it's not as flexible as the kind of footage you'd get of the Zenmuse X3. One other little negative is um, most of these camera apps do not have the full cinema 4k resolution the 4096 by 2160 they only have the what i'll call the uhd version which is 3840 by 2160 pixels but you know it's not a big deal but it is a bit of a negative in that you don't have that full cinematic 4k resolution one other one which we also experienced we've seen it on several videos right here on youtube is the what they call the jitter effect jitter or however you want to pronounce it it's been mentioned that maybe the in-camera image stabilization is competing with the gimbal stabilization and as such and because of that there's a bit of a conflict which is manifesting itself as a jitter in some of the footage we noticed it especially with the dji go app and the least we saw it was with the filmic pro app and then the last negative is the fact that with this particular gimbal you cannot lock it down it's always going to be wobbly like this unlike unlike the zenmuse x3 which as you know you can lock completely and it doesn't move around so you know especially if you have to detach this and then reattach it to a z-axis you know it's because it's moving around all the time this can take quite a few attempts to to nail it first time so that's a little bit of a negative other than that we really enjoyed our time using the zenmuse m1 would have no hesitation to recommend it if you want to add it to your osmo ecosystem i mean for its price you're basically saving quite a few bucks as i said and um it really does a great job really does a great job i think we'll be using it you know in combination with other cameras for mainly for b-roll type of footage so audio maybe is not such a big deal for us in that situation but we want to know if you've recently got your zenmuse m1 what has been your experience have you enjoyed using it 
Is it something that you can, you're going to use a lot of the time? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, this really helps us to gauge, you know, which direction we're going. Tell us so, you know, give us the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, tell us why you didn't like it. And that's the only way we can really improve what we do on this channel, which is really to share tips, tricks, ideas, tutorials, and everything to do with the Osmo and its ecosystem of accessories, gadgets, cameras, you name it. Last thing I just want to mention, as you guys know, we'll be launching the Goose Pod at the beginning of March. We really, really want to thank those guys who have shown us an indication. And this is confirmed for us that, you look, maybe there are people out there who will be interested in getting hold of the Goose Pod. If you're one of those people, don't hesitate. Head on over to goosepod.com. Simply register your interest and we'll keep you updated right up to the time we launch. We're super excited and I'm sure this little guy here is gonna be very handy in any camera kit, in any camera bag. So till next time my friends, thank you so much for watching and go out there and create some really epic videos. Adios.